Yo, what is going on, you filthy far fetch? Yeah, we're playing some games with Luke Metal. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Just felt like playing some Luke Metal today, so that is what we're gonna be doing. Um, of course, two Lucara Mel Metal, the four Zacian, uh, the two Zama Zenta. If you're unfamiliar with this deck, um, Zacian is our overall main attacker, uh, unless we play up against some tag teams, not tag teams, V Maxes. Um, and then we can use the Zamazenta because it doesn't get hit by damage from V Max Pokemon. And this kind of becomes our main attacker against stuff like Eternatus, Dragapult, Colossal V Max, stuff like that. Uh, we don't not use Zacian, but uh, no longer our uh, uh, our main attacker in that one. And then they're comboed with the Lucario and Mel Metal tag team uh, with that Full Metal Wall GX for two metals. All our metal Pokemon take reduced 30 damage. And then uh, we also just call the energy from our opponent's active Pokemon. So really strong to uh, make our metal Pokemon, depending on which one we're using for the matchup, really tanky for the rest of the matchup, and um, just give us a big advantage uh, that way. Uh, and then we also play healing in the deck, like the Mount Mana. Get some more reduced damage from the metal goggles. So we're taking minus 60, uh, and then we're also healing 120 with Mount Mana. So uh, super tanky, make our attackers live for as long as possible until we set up the next one and kind of just go from there. So alongside all this, we got four crushing hammers. Uh, in here because we remove the energy with the full metal wall um, and then we remove more energy with the crushing hammers uh, we got some pokey stall and poke lily's pokey dolls in here for pivots so if they like knock out an attacker we can send up a doll and then metal saucer to our new attacker or attach to our new sauce attached to our new attacker i was gonna say attached to our new saucer our new attacker put the doll on the bottom of the deck and then set up our new attacker Four metal saucer of course it is the zation deck for quick ball to find our pokemon also have one tag call in here to help find pokemon and some of our uh, tag team supporters or switch to reset those brave blades we got a tool scrapper in here to help get rid of mostly like big charms against adp but uh, even metal goggles in the mirror match can be annoying stuff like that one chaotic swell uh really good against uh poison eternatus uh because of keeping that uh pesky stadium the dark city out of play can be a really big deal to make sure they don't have like endless mobility against us and that can make it really hard for us to win that matchup sometimes but the chaotic swell really shuts that down for Quite a few turns to make it can make it awkward for them to move their Pokemon around. So Chaotic Swell is huge in that matchup. Uh, three bosses orders. We want to be Gustin as well when we want to chaos only specific. Of course, for Marnie for for research. I mentioned the four metal goggles. And we got four coding energy and then nine basic metals of co coding energy. Of course, removing the weakness from our Weddle, metal Pokemon. Weddle Pokemon. Metal Pokemon. And uh, I think that's it. That's all I want to say about the list. Um. Do, 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 do. Yeah, let's get to some games. All right, we're getting into one here. I've been liking to go second with uh, the deck recently just because sometimes you don't have the best like start unless you get to play the draw supporter alongside it. Also, a lot of decks like to go second right now. Um, so we want to take that into account as well, especially when playing on the ladder. So yeah, I've been liking to go second. This is not, this is a hand we're going first would have been better. Expect, unless, you know, our opponent's playing something like peek around or something where they want to go second. Then us going second is definitely the way we want to go. Um, but yeah, we'll see what they're playing. All right, it is Poltegeist, um, or I should say it is um, Mad Party. Mad Party. Now, Mad Party's fine going first in this matchup, so we don't really get an advantage there. And our hand isn't really, unless we top deck like a Marnie or something, we're not going to be able to really abuse the fact that uh, we are going second. Um, so we want to try and get out Luke Metal as soon as possible. Uh, we want a GX attack to reduce the damage we take, and then um, kind of go from there. We want to try and use Mal and Lana's aggressively to heal our Pokemon and hopefully set it up so our opponent actually is taking like two hit KOs as opposed to one hit KOs but that can be a little bit tough at times so we'll probably quick ball away like the crushing hammer and then um quick ball away the crushing hammer and grab the Luke metal well now there's an energy in play so we're definitely gonna get rid of that another thing that can happen in this uh or as mad party is just bossing up there to detonates and stuff can like make it so they run out of energy Especially if we get like heads here, tails. Okay, if there is a, I grab the Luke. There's Caitlyn and Cynthia. Our second Luke medal is prize, which we'd actually rather use a second Luke medal to attack with in this matchup. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of switch or a quick ball. I think I'm gonna get rid of the quick ball here. Keep the switch. We have a ton of time to find another Zation. I will bench Luke Metal, attach to the Luke Metal. Now we could switch and GX attack right now. Um, I don't hate the idea of that. 
could even switch and KO this Senesti and then GX attack the Bunnelby. But I want to reduce the damage I'm taking, but also KOing the KOing the Senesti would be pretty good. Um, I think I'm kind of down to just KO Senesti. It just it it feels like it's just kind of a good play. Um, so we're just gonna go for it. Don't let it get to a Pulte guys is a pretty good situation to try and like represent here. Like yeah, just try and like. Yeah, don't let him get to the don't let him get to the pulte guys is pretty good it, like allows him to discard cards uh, or discard the mad partiers to draw cards and so on and then we could even just go in with the heavy impact next turn actually no, this would be a bundle b so we could go in with that steel fist um or we could gx attack this turn to try and take that reduced damage i could have gx attacked this turn um but i think maybe using brave or intrepid sword would be better than that we don't really have a lot going on in the hand um so we do want more stuff to work with the um caitlin since he didn't draw us a whole ton uh, we have a fair shot to top deck something like a draw supporter or something um but yeah we could just full metal wall this turn start taking that reduced damage and then kind of go from there well they're hitting pretty hard their hand was full of mad party they're hitting for 160 here 130 because of the metal goggles we might just have to go ahead and swing and hit this bunny actually in this situation uh we might not have time to full metal wall now maybe i should have yeah, maybe I should just full metal walled last turn. Just go for that aggressive full metal wall. We know their attacker is probably going to be the Bunnelby, which means the Steel Fist would get the knockout on the following turn. Um, we can just kind of go from there. Now we, well, now also we maybe just have to Steel Fist uh, and KO this Bunnelby. Uh, this does kind of feel awkward. Maybe I put myself in a little bit of an awkward spot here. Uh, it just seemed so good to like take that knockout there. I was like, all right, I'm just going to go take this knockout. And now it's kind of becoming or feeling less good that I did that uh, took that line of play. Uh, my opponent's going digging super deep here. Um, I can't even imagine what they want off this Crobat. They have pretty much everything they could ever need, I think. Um, but maybe there's there's something else I'm missing here that they're they're looking for here. Comes a Great Ball, Funnel B, okay. Um, I'm sure that'll make its way to the bench, maybe, uh, just in case I Marnie them. But maybe they're looking for something. Maybe they're just looking for a Sinesti. Uh, maybe they don't want to bench the Funnel B. Um, okay, the bundle B is coming down. That's what I thought. Yeah, now this is like they hit really hard this turn. It's a little bit awkward for me. A Mal and Lana here would be okay. Uh, and energy is not as good. We could take the knockout, like I said, but it doesn't feel too much good. But also, full metal wall doesn't feel very good either. Um, I think I'm just gonna go for the knockout. I will bench this other station this time. Yeah, Steel Fist, take the knockout, but it's almost guaranteed that they're gonna have an attacker next turn and knock me out. So this doesn't feel very good either. I'm gonna get the energy here though, just in case they whiff. Um, Card off our prize cards, crushing hammer. Uh, not too ridiculously good in this matchup, but if there's ever a turn where we don't actually knock them out, but we, we still want to remove their energy, that is that does become an option for us. Um, but I, I'm kind of scared now. Yeah, I maybe should have just gone with full metal wall turn one and then steel fist KO the bundle be after that. Take that reduced damage. Um, not to say that we they wouldn't have actually two hit KO'd us still, because they were in a pretty good spot. They were doing a lot of damage, and then they would have also had a pulty guys to work with as well. Um, to help do more damage. Yeah, there we go. Hitting us for 170 there. And that was with reduced 80 damage. Um, this guy's only do it, reducing it by uh, what's called. So I think they're knocking out my Zations right here, which is really bad for us. So we need like top deck, uh, Mel Goggles, to put on this one to like live for an extra turn or something like that. I don't know, just another Zations. So we're just gonna have to go attach and then Intrepid Sword. Uh, I did get a Metal Saucer, but I didn't bench this station. So I should have benched this station. I guess that makes sense. So I have the station on the bench. And if I get a Metal Saucer, Metal Saucer to this guy, he has to switch out. I'll bench the station next turn. I actually don't really want to bench this anymore, but I do want a Metal Saucer to it. So I probably have to bench it, to be honest. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure they get the KO here. Let me count. Uh, 200 to 20. Oh, no, I miscounted here. They're doing 220. So they don't KO me at all. They need two more Mad Partiers in the discard pile with two in play. Um, and not a whole ton left. So they might not be able to get the KO here. There's one into the discard pile. Uh, they only have the maximum of two mad partiers left. And then at that point, it's possible they actually run out of attackers. Um, not too ridiculously likely, I don't think, but it is possible. Yeah, I think I'm about to take an L here to the mad party. This matchup is close. Um, definitely mad party has like kind of control of the matchup. If they just get really going really fast early on, they kind of just take over and there's nothing the other deck can do about it, which would be me with the Luke Metalization. There's a couple different ways I could have played out that turn one. The early knockout on the Sinesti felt good. The other ways I could have played it out, though, is I could have just gone with an Intrepid Sword, which is probably what I should have done. And I think they even get the KO on my Zacian that is set up here. That's terrible for us. Um, 
Yeah, now we're in a terrible spot. Now, how many twin energy? They're down two twin energy. Um, I could get like a crushing hammer heads and then top deck boss and maybe boss up to the Denny or the Crobat. And then that can create those scenarios where they kind of like just kind of start running out of energy. Um, so that's three of their air balloon. Yeah, goodbye, Zation. 260. Wait, did I miscount again? I feel like I didn't count. Uh, 100. Oh, I didn't GX attack. For some reason, I thought I was reducing damage for my GX attack. Yeah, I didn't GX attack at all. Don't, don't listen to me. All right. Crushing hammer. Hopefully, it heads. Okay, so they're doing 260, but I haven't GX attack, so this doesn't really matter at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw it here. Research. And I basically need to get Switch and Doll to survive here. There's Doll, but no Switch. So I guess we're conceding as we uh, take a pretty hefty L here to the Mad Party. Yeah, I should have gone my, I should have gone with a different option on the turn one. Like, the knockout seemed really nice because them getting early Pulte Geist is just not great. It allows them to discard cards, draw plus two, get more Mad Partiers in the discard pile, draw more cards so they don't dead draw. Um, I could have gone with just Intrepid Sword, like attached to Luke Metal Intrepid Sword. I think that was probably the best because my hand was kind of dead, so I just kind of needed more options. So I think attached to Luke Metal Intrepid Sword was the way I should have gone. And then from there on the next turn, GX attack the Bundle B once it hits me. But then I have the Intrepid Sword cards to work with, so I shouldn't be in such a uh, limited option scenario like I was there. So a little bit of a mistake. I don't play this matchup a whole ton from the Luke Metal side, so we did a little learning and uh, play better in the next one when I play against Mad Party. Okay, gone to another one. We won the coin flip. I want to go second. Like I said, like, so it didn't work out with that Mad Party game, but there's so much more decks on the ladder right now that want to go second. And this kind of hand is great to be going uh, second with. We could even get like a turn one Luke Metal playoff. Quick ball for the Luke Metal. Metal Saucer to it. Switch into it. Metal Goggles. Uh, GX attack. We're up against some kind of Zation deck. So we probably need to Goggles are active just in case they get off a uh, Brave Blade. I am going to get that... Uh, metal here but i'm gonna set up the zation here just so i can like potentially be aggressive early on here um we could goggles here switch into this one and then and then intrepid sword with this one actually it's unlikely they brave blade it unless of course they're playing adp zation then it's not super unlikely um they probably can't brave blade it off the bench so i don't want them to brave blade kale my active so we're gonna go like this i guess and then go like this yeah and then we'll intrepid sword with the one on the bench that seems fine um, well, now that I've drawn like this, I kind of want an Intrepid Sword with the active one. So I want to go attach here, Metal Goggles here, Doll out, keep the rest of the hand, and then Intrepid Sword with the active one. Um, if I hit like a double hit, that's pretty unlikely I get double hit on, on energy there, though. So I don't know. This works out. This works out fine. Uh, Zation's about ready to swing if we want it to swing. Um, the rest of the hand, not great. Not a whole ton of options. Uh, we could have split the energy one on the Luke Metal as well if we wanted to. Um, but it's like fine to have not as well. We'll attach a Luke Metal this turn uh, for sure, I think. Um, we'll see a little bit more of our opponent's deck. It looks to me to be... Well, no, there's the Air Balloon. So now I'm thinking it's ADP Zation. Uh, I was going to say, it looks to me to be like a mirror match. Um, but now I definitely think it is uh, ADP Crushing Hammer. Um, which means if it is ADP Crushing Hammer, we want it to have set up our Luke Metal. Which is maybe what I should have gone for anyway. Going up on the ladder specifically, we're kind of blind to what our opponents playing like we don't know what they're playing um and it's more likely to be adp than luke metal so and luke metal setting up luke metal over like in the mirror match we definitely want to set up the uh zation first because we can get some like early brave blade knockouts on their stations if they don't get the goggles or don't gx attack whatever so we'll definitely want to go after setting up zation first um and then go for luke metal second in the mirror match it always feels a little bit better to have that more aggressive brave blade option to try and get ahead in the mirror match but against ADP, we definitely always want to set up Luke Metal first. So a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Um, we're not going to probably be able to Luke Metal this turn unless we top deck like a research or something, which then we might be able to pull it off. Um, but we do have two crushing hammers here. So we can just get some heads here or a heads and maybe stop the um, follow up ultimate ray. If they do, they first they got to get off the GX attack, which means they need that energy switch, but they haven't found yet. Uh, they still can dead a change. And they're actually running out of switch cards, which we could definitely take advantage of as well. So that's like another thing. That they're running low on here already down three switch three switch and they maybe only play three usually when you got to fit these crushing hammers you have to make a sacrifice somewhere in the list so it could be in those in those switches we'll see here comes the deny so they're going super hard here to try and find this energy switch let's see if they can get it uh spinner as well to thin out the deck another metal to the discard pile is not terrible because you can um just metal saucer those into play later oh look they're gonna fail it instead here comes the daddy change 
last six cards they'll be able to see this turn let's see if they can find that energy switch but like i said even if they do if we just get a crushing hammerheads or two um they can't get into that ultimate ray and that'll leave us in a in a pretty fine spot overall to be honest um so yeah it doesn't uh it's not that bad even if they get off the e-switch they whiff the e-switch we got plus one turn to work with and if we get a crushing hammer heads or two we could even make it uh a few more turns so here we go crushing hammer tails crushing hammer heads okay perfect um attached to the luke metal i could mount lana this turn because then i can play a draw supporter next turn if i have to so i kind of like that we're just going to switch to the doll uh healing in this matchup doesn't do a ridiculous um amount like it doesn't do a whole ton to heal in this matchup it's not the worst thing ever of course but yeah it doesn't it doesn't really do a whole ton like they're gonna either one hit ko us or hit us so hard that the healing the, the switch effect out of the mountain lana is really the uh what we utilize in this matchup um now they got their water but they didn't have an e-switch in the last hand which means they would have to top deck an e-switch um if not they're gonna have to play like a draw supporter or daddy change again so i'm feeling pretty good about our current situation okay they did top deck e-switch then um must have been right because they didn't it's uh yeah so they top decked e-switch they dug pretty deep to whiff it so not a huge surprise at the top deck now they can actually make a play where they if they don't have to play a draw supporter to find the e-switch they can actually boss ization up we do have a research here and we could top deck even our second mal and lana uh a research to find help us find that switch so i'm not too worried about it and if we do get the gx attack on this that's a lot of energy out of play they still have plenty of metal saucers left but then we're in that point where our Zations, as long as they got the goggles that which they do we're a little bit too tanky for our opponents to actually take those uh chaos okay they're going with the research so this makes it way easier to hopefully get us into the luke metal um and get this gx attack off and like i said they're down a lot of switch which makes it, it's gonna make it hard for them to move this adp after we gx attack it it could get stuck for multiple turns and we allow us to get time to set up like a boss ko on their station that has energy before they have a chance to chase our stations which is what this game kind of turns into after we build gx attack it's kind of like okay who can ko the other person's zation first because that's where all the energy is um if they ever get to ultimate ray we're always in trouble but it doesn't look like we're, they're going to be able to ultimate ray this game thankfully for us oh we top deck a <laughs> metal saucer that's not a great top deck but i do want to look for that boss like i was mentioning so we're going to go ahead and play this um i'm gonna keep his goggles around because they could scrap for one of these and then yeah i don't want that so we're gonna go ahead doll under this up uh and then gx attack and we don't need goggles on this to make it live through a brave blade i guess unless they play leon of course if they do play leon i think like attach metal saucer leon switch and then they would be able to actually ko my lucari metal yeah so that uh metal saucer this card doesn't feel great but it doesn't it's just not that bad um, we're actually in a situation where we could hard retreat our Luke Metal and then KO a Zacian. That is a little bit aggressive, I feel like, though, because we don't have, uh, like, a follow-up to that. So then if they return KO to us, then we'd be in trouble. Like, we don't have a sw to switch it out, switch it back in. We would get three pri or two prize cards plus a top deck to work with, so that could give us some stuff. If we top deck switch here, I think we'll definitely go for that play because um, it is just so... That's, like, what you want to do in this matchup past the GX, GX attack points, which has happened. We both GX attacked. Um, but next turn we could just go like attach coding here. Uh, Caitlin and Cynthia hit the Mal and Lana, uh, which I might do. But we'll see. We'll see what the top deck is because it feels like it might be a little bit of an overextension to hard retreat our our Luke Metal here. So I'm gonna go ahead and thin out this. We're gonna grab Ace Amazenta, and then yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and go with the Caitlin and Cynthia play. It feels like it's just kind of fine. Um, and I'm not playing the Scrapper yet because they could still play Big Charms and just not have found them. Uh, so I want to be able to do that. Um, so I'm just gonna attach here and then I could intrepid but actually I think steel fist a little bit better it takes an energy out of the deck which sends out the deck it sets up this guy for the two a KO um and it also means I can retreat this now and still put an energy in play next turn so that actually is probably a little bit better now I can hard retreat the loop metal while attaching for turn to this or this uh well if they crushing hammer this I guess um so that feels fine here comes that crushing hammer I was talking about a tails for our opponent and yeah like I said like I mentioned, like way earlier in the game, three switch gone. Uh, the way the game developed, like it normally does, we had time to make it get into the situation. They whiffed the E switch turn one. I got the crushing hammer heads. Um, they still got the what's it called, but we got the GX attack after their GX attack, which is what we were looking for. Um, and now being down three switch is going to make it hard for them to move this ADP, like uh, like I mentioned. So that gives us a situation where we're more likely to be able to pull off that boss KO on the Zation. Um, and even if they have boss and three energy, they don't KO our Zation, so they need Scrapper 
Now Marcus said Leon gets the job done. Um, now we can go like this. I mean, we could just wait even longer, theoretically. Um, but we're in a, such a good... I think I'm just going to go ahead and get aggressive here. We're just going to hard retreat. And then boss takes two, two, taking two energy out of play like this just kind of feels so good. Uh, once again, going to hold everything. If I put this station in play, that becomes the station they can KO for free. At this point, I don't think it matters, though. Um, so I maybe could have been a little bit more aggressive there, to be honest. Uh, I could have also just quickballed it away. Quickball the station away, because I probably don't need this station. So then those two cards out of the deck, if our, does, if our opponent does play uh, more Marnies, two Marnies is usually the most you see in most ADP lists um, or reset stamp. Um, and it's less likely they have those counts of cards because they are playing Crushing Hammer, which takes up four spaces in the deck. So it's less likely they have higher Marnie count or reset stamps or anything like that. Um, they're also having they also have the orangaroo and the aegis slash v in here so you can only play 60 cards they gotta come from somewhere okay there's the full combo from our opponent though they got the saucer scrapper saucer saucer scrapper they only have one saucer left though so they cannot create another station to attack with on the following turn here comes another marnie though but all i need is an energy for this guy to get this knockout uh this is what i was talking about not benching that extra station like just in case like it's just un like unnecessary overextension. but uh-oh uh, there's their last switch as well. Um, so now they just can't reset this. So this means even though we whiffed an energy here, we can just, we put the metal goggles here and then we can just intrepid sword and we're safe pretty much for our turn. Guaranteed. And then we can chase this on the next turn. So see what our draws. Crushing hammer. We'll play it. Uh, heads. Perfect. Um, goggles. Doll. Not going to boss because they, that would, well, they are, they are at a switch. No, we just wait. Trepid Sword got the energy now. Um, yeah, we just saved the boss. Uh, I, I'm trying to think if there was a reason to play it. We could have bossed up this, and that means they can't move their ADP. They're out. They're down four switch. This is a big, big number that they're down. They still have probably a second air balloon. Almost every ADP list plays two air balloon. Um, so they could go air balloon attach retreat. But then we could have bossed the guru. Uh, but there's no way they leave us in the active here. So I'm gonna let them retreat themselves. And I can just boss it up, knock it out. And then if things still look weird, like it looks like we could still lose from there. I'm going to go ahead and boss up. Uh... Oh, well, no, but they can't switch. So we just get to KO this next turn. That's their fourth metal saucer. So we should just win the game. They could boss up my Luke metal and make things awkward for me, actually. Um, I guess I would keep checking the discard pile. Yeah, there's the boss on my Luke metal. So I have one, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine energy gone. Um... And yeah, now our Luke Metal's trapped in the active, which is annoying. They have nine energy gone. Let's see, four. Did I count that right? They have plenty of energy left. We could just boss up the, the ADP, like I mentioned. They can't one-hit KO my Luke Metal. So let's just go boss this. And if we have to research next turn... Uh, we also get to use Intrepid Sword here. If we have to research next turn to try and find a switch, that's fine. We're likely to hit one. We only we have, we have three left. Not, very, not a very big deck left. So that would also be fine. Um, yeah, we should go boss intrepid. Like I said, they don't have any switch left. They probably have a second air balloon. They probably have energy left because they usually play like, I mean, they have the Aurora in there, right? And they have two basic waters. So that's three. And then they probably play eight metal, eight to nine metal. So they have at least two metal energy left. There's one of them. Uh, I mean, they can e-switch up to this ADP and even ultimate ray if they want to. So that's also a possibility. Um, Double E-Switch here would work, I guess. They might even have double E-Switch, uh, which makes things awkward for me, kind of, to be honest. Oh, they do have double E-Switch. Okay, Crushing Hammer Heads would take this water away, though, meaning they can't attack with ADP anymore. Here comes the ultimate rate. But now I have this, actually, have this Luke Metal trapped in my active, which is super awkward. Um, let's see. They take no energy there. Let's see how the Crushing Hammer goes. It is a Heads. We can remove the water. And then we top deck Switch, which is up for this insane turn where we switch now. I'm going to go ahead and Metal Saucer the Luke Metal um, I guess it really probably doesn't matter, to be honest. I went ahead and did it anyways. Brave Blade, we remove probably their last water energy away, and then we take away the two metal energy off the Zation. That switch top deck was insane. Um, now that they actually win the game, if they do have, uh, a fourth water energy, like I did mention, they're down Aurora, plus two basic waters, but they could have more. Um, down three E-switch, they could play four water energy two aurora two water uh three basic water and aurora whatever they could play more <laughs> and they could ko my uh 
my Luke medal here with uh, with Ultimate Ray. Let's see if they got it. Um, I would bet they don't. Uh, you rarely, if ever, see four water energy in an ADP list, but it does happen sometimes. Um, so we're going to see. We're going to see. They said well played, and now they haven't played anything. So that makes me think they don't have it. And there's the victory. Okay, we get the dub here in this second game against the ADP. That's going to do for these games, the Luke Metal deck. Um, yeah, Crushing Hammers, I think, are just kind of the best way to play Luke Metal right now. Coding Energy, I'm still undecided of. If you guys have heard my opinion on coding slash weakness guard energy back when that was a thing in Luke Metal, I've always been kind of against it. I've been playing with it more recently. I don't play with Luke Metal very often. Recently, I've been playing more with the Coding Energy to try and get like, all right, how do I feel about this? Um, and I think it is okay. It feels like I sometimes don't win... Like it, does, it feels like it doesn't give me a good enough advantage against the fire decks to want to play it, but you do squeak out those wins sometimes against stuff like the Senna Scorch and stuff. So I don't hate it, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the games. See you tomorrow.